Welcome to our kitchen counter, the perfect place to enjoy some delicious conversation, all the while sipping on some richly satisfying coffee. Mm. Richly satisfying coffee. So, what are we chatting about this time? Well, MML Zombie suggested that we talk about whether or not being judgmental is tantamount to being hypocritical, you know, with a fair bit of pride pay, playing a major role in both. And this did arise from our discussion of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, about two episodes ago. It was entitled, An Apology, and God Telling Us Not to Judge. Thank you, from the heart. Heartfelt thanks to MML Zombie for this beautiful suggestion. And MML... Does that stand for 2050, or is it simply MML? Anyway, that's a side note, sidebar, side question. I digress. Let's get back to exploring this, for it has been fun and intriguing for me. Now, at that point, you might be thinking, I guess that could be intriguing. But I want to know, how did you go from judgmental and hypocritical mixed with pride to this being authentic versus role-playing? Well, since you asked, here we go. Now, as you may know by now, we look at everything here through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which is a following of Jesus, the Christ, which involves first and foremost a relationship with Him that then leads to studentship from Him that then leads to a life lived, based on everything we learned, for Him. See, without that relationship first and foremost, all we then have is an empty and hollow religion. Nothing but rules and rituals that we think will lead to a holy, moral, better life. I mean, we could even say that we feel will make us right with God. But no matter how sincerely in earnest we are about following all the tenets of religion, all the rules and the rituals, because we have no relationship with God, we are merely role-playing. For without that relationship with God as the basis for our religious practices, it is not an authentic faith at all. Well, It's not that we would be pretending, per se, but that without a relationship with God, you know, the one who makes true faith possible, who truly is the one who makes us holy, all of that can only ever be an empty and hollow following of the rules, Uh, playing the role of a devout, devoted believer, of having the religion, but not having the faith. And I do find this to be what Jesus calls being a hypocrite. You might be thinking, okay, okay, that was a bit long-winded, but where on earth did you find this? What informed your decision? Well, interestingly enough, I got this from Jesus himself when he was talking to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the religious leaders of his day. See, Jesus sets this up by first calling them hypocrites. And then he explains why they are hypocrites. And this I found in Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 through 9. Now, for his explanation, Jesus quotes Isaiah, saying, These people, they draw near to me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me, and they worship me in vain, teaching as doctrine rules made up by men. See, I find it informative. Informative? This informs my decision that Jesus called hypocrites those who wanted 
to get the religion right. They were passionate about it. And they did indeed get the religious acts and rituals right. I mean, Jesus even says that our righteousness has to far exceed theirs if we ever want to get into heaven. See, they thought they were getting it right. And yet, Jesus says their worship was in vain. Why was their worship in vain? Well, they were far from Jesus. They did not know God. They did not know Jesus. The one to whom all the religion and all the scriptures that they devoutly studied were pointing to. Now, as I explored this even further, by looking at all the times Jesus is recorded as using either the word hypocrite or hypocrisy, well, this idea fits in all those contexts. The idea of how sincerely religious people have the religion, but do not have authentic faith. And I'll list these passages in the description area so you can check them out for yourself. I mean, even in Matthew chapter 23, verse 3, where Jesus is telling all the people to do as these religious, religious teachers teach them to do, but do not do as they do. Well, even here, I feel, find that this thought underlies what Jesus is saying. And I find this from reading the entire chapter, all of chapter 23. For as I read chapter 23, Jesus does acknowledge that these teachers keep the religious practices. They tithe to the nth degree. Indeed, they do seem to be very righteous, Jesus says. You know, to seem to be in good standing with God. They cross all the, they dot all the I's, cross all the T's. And yet, they do not know God. So, because of that, they are full of pretense. They are role-playing. They do not have authentic faith. And that is what the people he is talking to are not to do. They are to learn about God from them, but then they are to draw near to God, to have the authentic faith and not hold on to doctrines made up from the rules of other people. And now, with this understanding of Jesus' use of the word hypocrite and hypocrisy, those, I guess, are words, two words, do I find being judgmental to be tantamount to being a hypocrite with a fair amount of pride thrown in and playing a major role in that? Well, let's deal with the pride issue first. Yes, I find pride in what we know, you know, knowledge, to be involved in both. See, last time we mentioned an old proverb that knowledge is proud of what it knows, all it knows. And wisdom? Well, wisdom is humbled that it knows no more, that it knows so little. I have never seen a truly humble person ever be judgmental. Now, please keep in mind what I mean by, me, by being judgmental. Here's what I mean. This is what I'm talking about. Making quick and excessively critical judgments, especially moral ones, about the person. See, and while this will be based upon their ideas and actions, yes, it is not referring to judgments made on those ideas and actions. See, being judgmental involves disrespecting and devaluing the person. It's saying, you know, that person is stupid. That person's just plain evil. They're a heretic. They're wrong. They're empty-headed and of evil character. Or, as Jesus frames those last two, by calling a brother Raka and a fool. See, all of these implies a sense of moral superiority on our part. A holier-than-thou attitude on our part. It is an attitude that is condemning of the person, him or herself, not just on their ideas. 
Also, also, being proud of what we know can indeed lead us to love being known for what we know and to show off that we know it. You know, much like the Pharisees praying to show how righteous they were or making physical displays of fasting again to show off how righteous they were. It's not that they weren't sincerely following the religion, but that their knowledge was so proud of what it knew, it wanted others to know that it knew. Now, as for being judgmental and being a hypocrite, being equivalent. Well, while I think you don't have one of these without the other, I do find them to be a little different. I find hypocrisy to be the cause and being judgmental to be the result. For being judgmental comes from a lack of true love and compassion for the one that we are being all judgmental of. Well, and in 1 John, we are told that, you know, if we say we love God, but we hate our brother, we are liars. For anyone who does not love his brother cannot love God. So, you know, at the very least, we could say that when we choose to go and get all judgmental and condemning, we have stepped onto the path of the role player. As authentic faith, you know, one involving a growing relationship with God, has been suspended and left behind due to our lack of love for our brother. And, um, as to relating this to Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, you know, where Jesus does tell us not to be judgmental, and where he says, You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye. Well, in light of what we've seen so far, could not this plank be the sincere but inauthentic role of role playing? You know, doing what is religiously right, but truly lacking in love. And, you know, as 1 Corinthians chapter 13 does point out, this is to become like a clanging symbol, very obnoxious, gaining nothing as a result. You know, being rude, being proud, being easily angered, all of this comes from a lack of love. It's a thought anyway. And could Jesus be saying, draw near to me first, get to know me first, have authentic faith in me first, then look to the other people. Again, worth a thought. Well, let me know what you think. I'd dearly love to hear from you. And, you know, whether you agree or disagree with me, do me the honor of telling me the reason you think as you do. For that is how conversations can begin. Conversations from which we both can grow. And that is a beautiful and much sought for thing. And MML Zombie, I do hope this was worth your suggestion. Until next time, then. Oh! And if you have an assist, and if you do have a suggestion yourself or something you'd like to chat about, leave it in the comments section. I'll be happy to talk about it. Okay, well now, until next time, may you continue to grow in your authentic faith and avoid ever abandoning that for mere role playing. Role playing at religion. And take it easy. Take it slow. And may coffee into your cup always flow.